I can post that on my Goodreads page. Exactly, we can share this. So, welcome. Um, shall we call you John or shall we call you Derek today then? Well, on Ibrooks Radio, he was calling me both. <laughs> he couldn't remember what my name was. No, I pre prefer to be Derek when I'm, I'm talking about my, uh, my writings. Yeah. Definitely, de definitely Derek. So how we have today, we have um, the, the, the very lovely Mr. Derek Niven, actually, as, in, as opposed to Derek Bogard, when, you, yeah. <laughs> when you've got your other book. Yeah, I've, I've got the book here. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> That'll upset the Rangers fans. So here we are. <laughs> We're celebrating the launch today of this book, um, The Pride of the Bears. So um, lovely to have you join me today. and uh, yeah, lo Lovely to be here, Kim. A good chat about, uh, about this book. Um, but before we start, well, we actually, well, you sent us a little um, uh, kind of video that we're going to uh, go through. So what I'm going to do is just share. Yeah. Just a, a little PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, just a short one. Just to, um, yeah, just to get you heated up. Just to get, exactly. So I'm just going to call this up. Make sure I've got that one. Share and we will. Can, can I also say that my uh, film director has joined us today? <laughs> so, uh, are you going to go through the slides or do you want me to talk, talk over them a wee bit? If you want to talk over them, we can go I would just like to welcome everybody today uh, to my presentation uh, of uh, my new book, uh, Pride of the Bears. Uh, the Untold Story of the Men and Women Who Made the Barca Bears. And Barca is a uh, short for Barcelona, for those that don't know that. Okay. Excellent. Move on. Here we are. Did, did, did. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll all have seen the, the, the launch celebration uh, uh, slide on uh, Facebook and various social media. And so I'd just like to welcome you all and uh, we'll get on with the little uh, video. Yep, so here we have. Congratulations, well done. Uh, Finish it off. <laughs> and now over to Kim for the inter interview. <laughs> uh, there you are. How, how slick was that then? <laughs> that, that was produced by John Steele, who is with us, uh, uh, joining us from Ibrox today, as you can see. <laughs> um, and so yeah, that was it's great. Um, I love the video, and I love the little bit of these. When you get to the end, and it says that um, all the produced by, directed by, you know, written by, <laughs> and it all says me, mm, which is um, absolutely well done. That's, that's John's idea. <laughs> um, I like I like it too. Yeah. I, I think I think it's a it's a great it's a great little video that just kind of starts off with. Um, the inquiry then, I suppose, into, into this book. So, so I'd like just to kind of kick off um, with, first of all, congratulations, because 
Um, this is your third book in the Pride of series, um, and your fourth book that you've done because you had your other um, fiction uh, story. We did a little plug plug for that as well while we're sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> End of day. Um, I've got a few questions and what I'd like to do is, is I'll go through a few questions and if anybody else has a question that comes up then you can actually write it up in the chat facility um, uh, on Zoom and we'll, when we get to the end we'll open up an opportunity for other questions and if we've got time and um, we can come to the, to the mics and let you actually ask a question directly. Um, but for now I just wanted to start off with, um, so the, the why the bears then? Why is it called Pride of the Bears? For anybody who's maybe not that not that knowledgeable about Rangers football club. Well, really, we've got to go back to the first book uh, because um, the first book was called Pride of the Lions, uh, and that's about the Lisbon Lions. And of course, there you go. <laughs> Teresa's got her copy, uh, <laughs> and the. Of course, a group of lions is called a pride. So that's where the that's where my idea to come up with this uh, series of pride books came. And of course, you know, like you, you you go any any fan who gets the book is going to be proud of their team. Um, but uh, you know, bears. Uh, uh, th this will completely go over Nathaniel's head because it's Glasgow rhyming slang for the teddy bears, uh, which is from the jers. Now that doesn't sound, but in Glasgow you would say the teddy bears. <laughs> so the teddy bears um, are the jers. Uh, so pride of the bears is the pride of the teddy bears. Um, I think John, you, John, I think John had a completely different uh, title for me uh, at one point. But uh, I, I wanted to stick with Pride of the Bears because I wanted to keep it as a four, yeah, uh, four word uh, title. Yeah, and I love the, the fact that you've got the caricatures actually of the team here, and that's also your your own artwork. That's all my own artwork. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I I had actually wanted to use um, some a uh, some. When I was doing the Pride of the Lions, I wanted to use some Celtic photographs and things like that, but very difficult to get a team that Celtic or Rangers to agree uh, to some of their copyrighted material. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do my own cover, and I come up with the idea of the caricatures, and, and you know, everybody seems to like them. You know, they, they, they seem to give it a, a, a nice feel uh, yep. for the front cover of the book. Yeah, I think it goes really well because like you've got your unique take on their family histories and what you've researched, but also your your um, your own artwork to kind of really kind of depict the um, the players, which is which is great. Um, can I, I suppose to ask about what was it that was really significant then about this team that deserved the book? You know, what 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 did they actually achieve then that actually made it really good? Well, to, to be fair. Uh, you know, uh, the book has actually come out two years early uh, because of pressure from people like John Steele. <laughs> um, the, the, the Pride of the Lions came out uh, you know, on the 50th anniversary of Celtic's victory. Now, they were the first British team to win the European Cup in 1967. And it, uh, the, that book came out in 2017 for the 50th anniversary. And it always planned that uh, the Pride of the Bears would come out in the 50th anniversary of um, the Rangers winning the 1972 European Cup Winners' Cup in Barcelona. Uh, but I was getting quite a lot of pressure from Rangers fans that uh, I was selling a lot of these Celtic books. When we're we going to get the Rangers book? I thought, I, I really need to knuckle down and get it out. But... I've left a gap, and you'll be pleased to hear this. We could maybe do a 50th anniversary edition in two years' time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, another special edition of it. Special edition, yep. Yep, that, that's, that sounds like a good plan. We could, we could have special edition, we could have splattered across the front of the cover then, you know, just for, <laughs> to get that going. Um, so what was it then that, 
you know, yeah, I can understand totally. You've got a Celtic book, you've got a Scotland, the Scotland managers, the Pride of the Jocks book. Yeah, Scotland managers book. Oh, there, Teresa's got it. Yeah, Pride <laughs> of the Jocks. Yeah, again, all the caricatures are by myself. Yeah. Um, and we've now got the Pride of the Bears. Obviously, the, like you say, particularly in Glasgow, you need to to to, to cover both both camps um, and not just a new camp. Then. <laughs> and I see in all three books, there's one person who features in all three books. Well, John Steele features in all three books, to be quite honest, because I thank him every time. But but Sir Alec Ferguson, he features in all three books because. His influence in that period of Scottish football, uh, you know, you know, was immense, and then he went on to become, you know, what I believe is, and maybe Nathaniel, as an Englishman, might disagree with me, but I think he's the greatest uh, British manager of all time. Uh, his record is second to none, uh, and I just got an email from his office today to to say that he's received his Pride of the Bears. So, quite pleased at that. <laughs> Well done, excellent. That's a good, that's a good way um, to start. So, so I mean, but this, so the, the 1972 victory then um, yeah. in Barcelona, you know, it has it's quite significant though, isn't it? You know, just in Scottish football terms, because I mean, Rangers, yeah, I mean, Rangers were the uh, they were the first Scottish uh, football team to lift the European Cup Winners' Cup, uh, and a. Uh, they, they actually had gone through quite a tragic period between 1967 and uh, 1972. Um, 1967, they got to the final uh, against uh, Bayern Munich, and they were beaten in the final, and their greatest rivals went on to Lisbon and lifted the European Cup that same year. So that didn't go down too well. 19, uh, 1969, uh, I was taken by my father uh, to my first Rangers game. It was against Dornick. Uh, and uh, they were beaten 6 2 in aggregate that night. And uh, my father said to me, I'll, nev I'll never take you to another Rangers match again. And he never did. <coughs> and uh, although, although he went back with my brothers, uh, so I, I ended up the only McGee that. That didn't uh, didn't support the Teddy Bears, but in uh, 1969 they were they were put out of Europe that year. John, John's entering. You were entering the football stadium there. You were going up the hallowed stairs there, John. <laughs> uh, nine, now 19, uh, 1971, John was it? 1971, the Ibrox disaster. Yes. Now, John was actually at that game. Uh, 66 people were killed in the Ibrox disaster. Um, and it, it was the low point in Rangers history. And, and John assures me that he actually went out that famous or infamous Stairway 13 uh, just a few minutes before the disaster happened. Mm. Uh, and then the following year, Rangers uh, were actually eliminated in the 1972 campaign by a Dutch referee who had awarded penalties at the end of the game. Uh, in Lis it was actually in Lisbon again, funnily enough. And uh, it turned out uh, that uh, a young Scottish uh, reporter had noted that Rangers had actually won the game on away goals. And he ran into the dressing room and all the Rangers players were in the dressing room crying, thinking we're out of the cup and all that sort of thing. And he said, you've actually won the game. You've, you've won it in away goals. The referees made a mistake. And uh, the Rangers manager ran to the UEFA official and Rangers were awarded their tie. And the next day in the Scottish press, they hadn't heard it. And they said Rangers are out of the cup uh, when they had actually qualified. And they went on to win the cup that very same year. So I mean, uh, that 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 few years was uh, a very historic few years for Rangers. Yeah, yeah. So quite quite a story actually, really. Then you know, just oh, absolutely, yeah. And something really celebrate. Yeah. But this book, as with your others, isn't a, a kind of traditional um, kind of a story about football. It's about the players and their their own histories then that you've really got to involve yourself. Yeah. I mean, I, I point that out in the book. Uh, uh, I mean, 
in two years time there'll be dozens of books uh, by sports journalists uh, about the 50th anniversary of Rangers living in Barcelona. Uh, so when I come up with the idea of the book, uh, being a genealogist, I come up with the idea of a, a kind of who do you think you are type of book. But taking every player who won a medal and uh, doing the research into their family history. Now, as you, as you know, I, I'm only limited to 40,000 words for a book like this. So I could only take it so far back. And in most cases, it would probably be about to the early 1800s. <coughs> yeah. uh, but, but, but that's the idea behind it. So it's really the, it's the men and women uh, who actually made these uh, players. And without these men and women, those, those players would never have been there on that night in Barcelona. Yeah, which I think is, is the real um, nugget of the books that you've produced, John, you know, that whole, that Pride series, because, um, you know, they think without, you know, sometimes quirks of fate and all sorts of things that have uncovered that actually if those things hadn't happened or people hadn't met, then you wouldn't have had, you know, this result with this team. Yes, I mean, I mean, that, that's the kind of things you find when you do family history, uh, that, you know, that there's quirks of fate, the likes of in the, one, one of the quirks of fate in Pride of the Jocks, for instance, uh, chapter one is Sir Matt Busby. Now he came from a, a mining village in Lanarkshire, and by, it, a, by the end of the First World War, um, from a, a fairly large family, there was only him and his grandfather were the, the only two males in the direct line. Like all his, uh, his father and his uncles were all killed in the First World War. Mm. So they were, you know, uh, uh, and I think it's the Bells Hill, is it Bells Hill War, uh, War Memorial? I think it's the Bells Hill War Memorial. And all these Busbys are, they're all listed on that, uh, on that uh, memorial. Yeah. So, so back for a quirk of fate, you yep. know, he, 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 he might never have become the great manager that he was. At, and, and, and he went through the, the Munich air disaster as well. So yep. he did. So as a, as a genealogist, um, what, what tools do you have nowadays to be able to kind of research? We were just chatting there before we kind of went and record, started the recording that obviously lockdown and the whole COVID-19 has put a kind of bit of a damper and be able to... Yeah, to well, I, I, I can't really do too much at the moment. Uh, you, you can do some online to some extent, but the way I, I do it is that I, buy a, I buy a seat in Edinburgh mm -hmm. at the National uh, Register of Scotland. Uh, and uh, so I've got access to all the Scotland's people archives and there's also the, the historical search rooms there, uh, which I think, you know, that Claire, Claire and I bump into each other uh, on many occasions in, 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 the, in the NRS, so we do. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're both looking forward to reopening and, and you know, we can get back on and, and, and do research. What was it? I'm actually researching uh, my my next book, which is Pride of the Hearts, which is it's the sixteen uh, the sixteen Hearts players who signed up for the Royal Scots six, uh, the sixteenth Battalion Royal Scots in the First World War, uh, and again it's the men and women behind them. Right. But uh, out, I think out of the sixteen, there was something like seven killed and five injured. I mean, it, it was horrendous, really, to be quite honest. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, I got to chapter three and I'm writing the book and I'm in tears myself. So, um, you know, it was such a sad book. Yeah. Mm. So, so if we come back, just, you know, the um, what really got you interested in kind of genealogy? Because you and I have a kind of shared history um, from way back before we were doing anything we published and, and you were writing. Oh, my family tree. <laughs> I know, I know, Don, I know. Don McKenzie's on my family tree, but I didn't know you were on my family tree. <laughs> back of the railway family, you know. Oh, the railway family, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but so, what was it that got you interested in actually studying the kind of genealogy? What, what, what sparked that? Believe it or not, it was my maternal grandmother. 
uh, and all I would, I mean, I was 15 years old, and all I wanted to do was just draw up a very basic family tree chart. And uh, my aunt took me to my grandmother. And so we started out, you know, so we got to, to her and my grandparents. Uh, and I said, well, what about your, grand, uh, your grandfather? So she said, oh, well, he was, uh, he was George Kai or uh, George Clark. I said, oh, was your grandmother, was, was she uh, married twice? Next thing, the hand comes up. I'm saying no more. <laughs> I said, well, that's me hooked. So since 15, I wanted to do genealogy. I had to find out what the story behind George Kai and George Clark was. Uh, now, I found out that jo I mean, he was an absolutely fascinating character himself. He was born George Kai uh, up in Niggin, in Cavendish. He came down to the Glasgow area and married my great-grandmother, uh, our great-great-grandmother. And uh, he changed his, after the wedding, he changed his name to George Clark. I've never actually worked out why, whether he was trying to escape the police or no idea. Uh, because my mother always said, oh, but I've got Kai, I've got Kai cousins, you know, like, so. Yeah. But he signed up for the First World War. I said, no, that can't be right. You know, like, you know, because when I looked at it, he was 56 years old when he signed up. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, he signed up for the, he's, he's actually signed up for the Royal Scots, believe it or not. Uh, the same, the same uh, regiment that I'm researching for hearts. Uh, but they, they obviously soon found out, oh, wait a minute, George, you're a wee bit old for this. But he didn't get demobbed. They put him into... It was a kind of home guard at that time, the Royal Defence Volunteers, and he ended up at um, the Nobel Works. Do you know the Nobel Works at Ardeer? It became the, IC, the ICI Works at Stevenson. Yeah. So he ended up spending the war guarding that from German saboteurs. <laughs> so he did. I think he was about 61 by the end of the war. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's where your, your interest started then. And then so you've gone on obviously to use that for you know, I know you've worked researching lots of other people's family trees and um but then when you get into to doing something like this, you know, for, for the book, um you know, just where, where do you start? I mean, did, did, you, did you just, you know, like start with, you know, the actual player and then try and just, how, how do you work back to kind of get there? Oh, no, you, you, I, well, obviously all of the players uh, are well documented. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you can just go onto Wikipedia and you'll get the date of birth, you know, the name and the date of birth and yeah. all that of the player. So using, I mean, using that, I've got to start with the birth record, you know, because I've got, you know, I've got to, I've got to verify that this is the person who was born on that day sort of yep. thing. And, and I actually found some of the dates, you know, were, you know, on Wikipedia or whatever, they were wrong, you know, like, uh, uh, because I, I got an irate Celtic <laughs> who, who, who uh, said that one of his uh, relatives was born on such and such a date, and I says, well, I've got a copy of his birth certificate, if you want me to send it to you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so you work from there, and a, a birth certificate in Scotland uh, will give you the name of both parents and their date of marriage and place of marriage. So you can then, the next step is you find that marriage certificate. The marriage certificate will then give their two sets of parents. Yeah. So, so you work very logically back in that sense. Yeah, yeah, and just and uncover, I suppose, what you can then from um, you know about about the, the individuals because that's that's what fascinates me is yeah. what you can actually learn really from you know going back in time and and learning about those people. Well, I, I mean, the other thing I do use is I mean, most of the players uh, have got biographies or autobiographies, yeah. and you can get some and. The, <clears throat> sorry, the only thing that I'm really interested in, I'm, I'm not so much interested in their football career, because again, that's all documented. What I'm interested in is maybe a family connection that they might talk about. So, I mean, there's a lovely story um, about Derek Johnson, 
about the last uh, uh, the last time he saw his father. His father died quite young, and he'd gone up to the hospital in Dundee uh, to find that the bed was empty. And it was only when he got home that he found, you know, his mother told him that his father had died. Uh, and he, he tells that story very succinctly, and, and I've used some of that in the book. Yeah. Um, Alec MacDonald talks about his, uh, his uh, Gallic granny up in South Uist. Uh, and uh, South Uist, a, a real hotbed of Rangers fomenting fans, John, is that correct? <laughs> I don't think there's one of them there. South Uist uh, is known for one of the isles on the Western Isles. Uh, I believe that the, 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 the Protestant minister was rowing across to South Uist. Uh, and a storm got up, and uh, he determined that God was telling him that uh, he shouldn't appear in South Uist, and he rode back. And South Uist has remained staunchly Roman Catholic to this day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but Alec MacDonald was very proud of his Catholic, um, his, his Gallic granny up in, in South Uist. And the, the thing about uh, the South Uist, um, the MacDonalds of South Uist, are very much connected into the Lords of the Isles. The, the Lords of the Isles were the MacDonalds who, who ruled the western Scotland right down from the, the, the right down to the Isle of Man and right up to the, the Long Island of Lewis and Harris and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so that, if I could go back far enough, I'd probably prove that Mac, Alec MacDonald was was descended from the uh, from the McDonalds of the Lords of the Isles. <laughs> so the so the the two lists. I'm, also, I'm going to kind of like in a, a in true fashion kind of read out the, the list of the team the, the players that you actually did um, include in, in in this book. So we had um, Peter McCoy, Sandy Jardin, Willie Matheson, John Gregg, Derek Johnson, Dave Smith, Tommy McLean, Alfie Cohen, Colin Stein, Colin Stein. Alec McDonald and Willie Johnson. So they were the, they were the 11 players then that played. The 11, that. Yeah, they were the 11 players who were on the park, but obviously the, the, the substitutes, including yep. a Ger German goalkeeper, uh, Jerry Neef. Jerry Neef. Yep. They, they, they won medals as well. Yeah, so yeah, Jerry Neef. Only enough, uh, his daughter ended up working in the railway. With, huh? uh, she was, I think she was in the Cannon House. I think John, John, did you know her? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we had Jim Denny, Graham Fife, Andy Penman, and Derek Perlane. Yes. So, um, so that was so those were the those were the, the ones that you've researched then and kind of shared and shared their kind of family stories. So, was there anything surprising then as you were like researching the the team that kind of came out as you were as you were going through their, their histories? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but it, coincidentally. Uh, with the Pride of the Lions, um, there were 16 players who won medals. Uh, and there were 16 players in the Rangers team who won medals. And I decided to do the 16 greatest Scottish managers. So, so far it's, <laughs> and, the, and there's 16, I mean, I don't know if this is fate, but there's six, 16 uh, Hearts players who marched down and signed up for the, the, the 16th Battalion Royal Scots. So the, the 16's my lucky number. <laughs> That's good because we've just got you know having four caricatures on each page. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's all very square, so it is. <laughs> um, so when, whilst you were researching their histories, um, you know what is there a, a common theme um, that kind of comes out about you know the kind of heritage and the um, you know where where these um, where these guys kind of really where their their families kind of came from or or just how they were how they were brought up. Well, basically, the same as most of our own family histories. Uh, we all came from, well, I know I came from fairly poor background, uh, which, uh, you know, it was railwomen, then going further back, it was coal miners. Uh, Don will remember our grandfather. Uh, he started out as a coal miner in Ayrshire, and then he came up to Glasgow. Uh, and then he became a real a, a real woman in the Glasgow and South Western Railway. And then going further back, it was all agricultural labourers. Now you find a very uh, similar theme 
uh, going through, uh, you know, like the Rangers book, um, what's his name, uh, Willie Johnson. He actually, he actually started in the mines in a fife and his father was a coal miner. <coughs> and then he got, a, he got a trial for Rangers he, and you know, went on to become a legend. But very few of them came from uh, what, salubrious backgrounds. Uh, so they did, you know, they all came from very poor uh, backgrounds. And, you know, like, I mean, these players, uh, although they're kind of legendary now, I mean, I think the Celtic players get something like a thousand pounds each for winning the European uh, Cup in 67. I think the Rangers players, and John will probably dispute this, I think they got about two thousand pounds each. I mean, yeah. Some of the play, some of the players today wouldn't even get out of their bed for that type of money, so they wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the, the, these players didn't make vast amounts of money uh, in those days. Yeah. The the, the other thing that uh, was fascinating, uh, particularly in the Rangers book, even, even even more in the Rangers book, I would say, than the Celtic book, was uh, the number of um, ancestors. Uh, like fathers or grandfathers who were professional footballers in their own right. Uh, now that that was quite unusual. It, it didn't normally go down from father to son, uh, but the likes of Tommy McLean was proud of his um, he was proud of his grandfather who played for Rangers. Uh, Derek Parlane, I think, is known as uh, at the time when he was signed. His father played for Rangers, and he was the first father and son group that played played for Rangers. Alfie Cohen, um, uh, when I was on Ibrooks Radio, somebody, uh, you know, Alfie Cohen was more infamous for actually leaving Rangers and signing for Celtic. Yeah. Uh, and somebody posted on Ibrooks Radio, he's not going to talk about the dark side, is he? <laughs> uh, which I didn't, I didn't. But Alfie Cohn's father, eh, he was a professional footballer as well. Eh, and not, not making great money, um, but eh, you know, like he, he, he played for Hearts and he was one of the, the famous terrible trio, trio of Hearts back in the 1950s. Uh, so uh, th th these were fascinating things to find out as well. Yeah. And like you were saying at the start, we were talking about how this book is that sort of who do you think you are type, you know, what you're saying. and it's fascinating because I love that program and how often you're watching something people are uncovering that they had ancestors who, you know, did jobs similar to themselves who might have been, you know, like in the theatre or, or were singers or artists or because obviously following sort of famous people, um, but they hadn't ever known, you know, so it's it's interesting whether someone does that, does that skill even pass forward in the genes, you know, is that, you know, so, um. I, I tend to say more, what do you can you are, because who do you think you are is copyrighted by the BBC? <laughs> uh, we'll do it the Scots then, exactly. <laughs> I, I actually, no, uh, to be fair, um, I, I would, we're going back to maybe about 20, 2016 when I came up with the idea uh, for Pride of the Lions. And at that time, uh, Who Do You Think You Are was, uh, I mean, it was very popular. Uh, it was very popular at the time. And, and that kind of registered in my head that I said, I can actually do a book based on a whole team. Now, at the time, my idea, uh, uh, as John knows, I, I'm a great Manchester United fan as well. Uh, my, I had planned to do the 1968 uh, European Cup winning team, but um, I don't know if Claire's done any English research. It's a whole different ball game cost-wise, so it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, it would be so prohibitive cost-wise to produce a book of that size uh, with that detail uh, that I had to part that. So, so we're sticking with a Scottish Scottish history then uh, uh, for, for the moment. If, if I ever make any money out of these books, and it's, 
as, as Nathaniel maybe finds, oh, I think, oh yeah, he's still there. Uh, as Nathaniel maybe finds, you've, got, you've actually got to work harder, and Teresa knows this as well, you've got to work harder to sell the books than actually write the books. <laughs> um, but uh, if, if we ever break even with these books, I think that the 1968 uh, European Cup team uh, for Manchester United would definitely be one that I would write. I think what we need to do is, is you know, is like kind of encouraging, encouraging all the football fans out there to, to come and tell you which, which ones they would, they would pledge their allegiance to kind of be buying lots and lots of copies then, isn't it? Well, funnily enough, in the letter to Sir Alex Ferguson, I have asked him if he would, uh, you know, back me in, in, in writing Pride of the Dawns which uh, would be for 2023, which was the 40th anniversary of his team winning the European Cup Winners' Cup in Gothenburg with Aberdeen. Yep. Well, that, that, that's, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's an endless list of books here, so there is. <laughs> I come up with the idea for one book, and it's, you know, there's a whole list of books that I could be writing. But, uh, look out for the box set. <laughs> Uh, and do you find that this is, I mean, obviously it's a very different style of writing from writing fiction, which you've all, all, all oh, seen, like, done. Yeah, well, uh, to, uh, totally different. You know, uh, I mean, you can be a bit more free-flowing in, uh, you know, in writing a science fiction novel or whatever. Uh, but with, the, you know, with a factual book, I mean, basically you, you've got to stick to your facts. You've got to uh, you've got to reference all your facts. Uh, you've got to be able to back them up, and obviously you, you you know because you're talking about living living human beings in in terms of some of the players. Some of them have actually sadly passed on, but you know the ones that are living. I mean you can't you can't uh, libel them or slander them or whatever, or or, or you'll end up in court. <laughs> so yeah. uh, it, 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 and. Uh, what I, what the, the, the Kenny McCallion of Ibrox Radio said, uh, what he liked about the book is that I break it into small chunks. Yeah. But, so I've got a chapter for each player, but there's small, uh, you know, there's small chunks or uh, sections for each uh, set of ancestors. Yeah. Uh, and what I said there was, well, you can pick and choose, you know, like what you want to read out of that. You know, so you can do a skim and scam. Yeah. Uh, scan, skim and scan, or uh, you can read the whole book, or uh, you can go back to it for reference at, at, at different points in time. Yeah, yeah. I have actually, um, I have not yet with the Rangers book, I'm, I'm hoping to, to hear this soon with the Rangers book, but I, I have uh, with the Celtic book, I've, I've, I've had people come along and said, I didn't realise I was related to, to the player, but my, my, my great grandfather's in that book, yeah, and uh, you know, they, they found out that they were actually related to a Celtic player indirectly through their great grandfather or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm waiting. He I'm waiting to hear a Rangers uh, fan coming along and, and seeing the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. You never know what you're uncovering then, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, well, that's the other thing. Uh, the, I mean, the other thing is, uh, we go back to the Victorian era, um, life was ve very much just the same, you know, uh, that uh, sexual relations happened uh, out with uh, marriage back then, uh, as they may do in the, uh, in the present time. But, but then it was, it, it was a scandal. Uh, but if I came across an illegitimacy, it's not something I could hide in the book, uh, especially if I couldn't name the father. <laughs> yeah. He was long gone. Um, uh, but uh, you know, uh, there, were, there were some interesting tales of illegitimacy. And, and John Gregg's one is actually quite a sad one uh, because um, I think it was his great great grandmother. Uh, I mean, he, she was a Gregg, funnily enough. You know, like, so, I mean, like, if, if the father had been known or she'd been married, he would never have been called John Gregg. But uh, she actually uh, she actually ended up dying in the poorhouse, so she did. I mean, you, know, you, you get some 
horrendous tales of, of poverty uh, that come out in these books. Yeah, and I think that's you said that now you're, you're looking at, the, at this um, this team who didn't come from wealth or you know privilege. They came, they came from you know, like I said, you know, origins where you know poverty and you know tragedy, you know, were, were part of their part of their life. Um, and you wonder now if you were if you were researching, you know, a current the current Rangers team, you know, it would be a completely different um, scenario, wouldn't it? To you know, just to start with, how many of them are even you know Scottish? Right? Yeah. So I, I, would, I mean, I wouldn't even know where to start with people like Alfredo Morelos. <laughs> I don't think he's got any Scottish ancestry in his blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a, a very different team nowadays. Well, I mean, it would actually be virtually impossible for me to 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 do, to do a modern team, you know, because they're scattered. You know, the players are scattered all over the world. Um, I mean, it it was actually very difficult for me to do Jerry Neath. Um, fortunately, the Neath family uh, were able to help me uh, back to their grandparents, uh, but even they didn't know. You know I mean, they were from. Uh, you know, they, they were from Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in München Gladbach, actually, uh, that's where he met um, a Mar Marcia, uh, his wife. Uh, she, her father was in, uh, he was in one of the air, air bases in Germany just after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And uh, she met Jerry Neath. And uh, he, he came over to Scotland. Uh, he actually... He actually played for Ali McLeod first at Aberdeen, eh, and then he got signed for Rangers. Uh, and, and and they were able to tell me that he used to um, he used to coach uh, the the Cardonald School kids, um, you know, in his spare time. He gave mm -hmm. up his spare time to, uh, and I think John was it seven nothing, John. <laughs> it was seven nothing. Yes. John John said he couldn't have been much of a goalkeeper because John played against Cardonald Primary School and uh, and and he beat him seven nothing and he scored a hat trick. <laughs> he scored a hat trick that day. He's got some memory, so he has. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, no, Jerry Neath. I I would love to have done a lot more on Jerry Neath, but uh, even they didn't know any further back than. And I didn't want to pry because you, you're talking about they, yeah. lived, they lived through the Second World War. They didn't maybe want to bring up too much about what was going on in Germany at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's been fascinating this chat. I'm just conscious of the time. Just want to see if anyone has any questions um, that they would like to ask. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, take it off the speaker view so that I can just make sure I'm caught up. So we've got, John has got a question. We're going to unmute him and let him, let him see if he's going to, but you might need to unmute yourself, John. I'll come to you first. Um, okay. Well, John, John, before you start, are you going to tell me what minutes you scored in? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, just a couple of viewpoints. The first point, am I detecting uh, Alan Glenn's secondary accent or... Absolutely. I just missed that. Well, I deliberately avoided mentioning Alan Glenn's tonight, uh, today because you say that every time you listen to me, I bump on about Alan Glenn's. But to be fair, Alan Glenn's, uh, the education I got there uh, was second to none. And uh, as John knows, that's where the moniker for Derek Niven comes from. Because uh, a boy called Derek Niven van den Bogart went to Alan Glenn's between 1931 and 1934, and he went on to become Sir Dirk Bogart, and he hated every minute of his three years at Alan Glenn's. <laughs> uh, just one thing, one other thing that Kim had actually touched on it when she was talking about uh, how things go from one thing to another and just a touch of fate. I think you might even recall, John, when I was researching my own family history alongside you, I had a passenger list going to Canada where my uh, grandfather and grandmother emigrated over to Canada to get a better life. And actually on the passenger list, there was a McGee, one of your relatives. Right. What? Wait, no, McHugh. 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 Yeah, one of your relatives. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, well, 
he, he, he was related to this maternal grandmother that got me, uh, got me involved in family history in the first place. Yes, uh, uh, I can't remember his first name, but yes, you're right. It was a McHugh, and we found out that he was actually related, uh, related to me. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Right, John. Thank you. Claire might want to ask something. Yep, yeah, there we go. Wait a minute. I'll... You want me to try and mute yourself, Claire? Mute seem... yourself, Claire. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Right. Um, it wasn't really a question. It was just more, more a comment um, that if you bring out the fifth uh, book for the an edition for the fiftieth anniversary in uh, two thousand and twenty-two, it might be worth mentioning that this January coming will be a special service on the second of the third for the fiftieth anniversary of the Ibrox disaster. Now, the chaplain for the Rangers is a lovely man. I mean, I went to the service for the 30th and the 40th anniversary, and it's very moving. It'll be very cold, but the 50th anniversary will be special. And even if you could try and go along, it's usually within Ibrox Stadium itself. Now, the minister is lovely. He's very respectful. He's also he's just retired as chaplain for Glasgow Uni, and he used to come along to the Christmas dinner at the Catholic chaplaincy. Uh, Stuart Macquarie, his name is. So, and also, um, you were right about, I mean, my mum's family is English, and the only gives you the index is the National Archives is open. Is it the McCann that gives it away? <laughs> oh, it's the Caulfield. <laughs> Handmade names Caulfield, which means Caulfield, <laughs> ancestry. And I don't know much about them, but I mean, if you use ancestry itself, you've got all the certificates and quotes for your common. So it's a very good resource. But I've mainly done my dad's side, the McCann's, which goes back to Ireland. But, I mean, I wish you, because I'll, I'll definitely try and buy the book. Waterstones is open again if it's, if it's there or yep. Lord, well, online. Okay. Hang fire on that one because I'm, I'm, I'm still in the process of negotiating uh, to get it into Waterstones because they've been in lockdown uh, and I think the, uh, I've explained to Kim before the meeting that uh, they've, they've restructured their whole management team uh, so uh, I've had to go through customer services uh, to try and uh, get it onto the community activities but I will let you know uh, you know when it when it when it becomes available in Waterstones. Um, Thanks, Claire. Any anybody else got a anybody else? Teresa, I think had I think Teresa and yeah, right. We'll we'll go we'll to Graham. Graham wants to ask a question. We'll start with Graham first. There we go, Graham. Thanks, uh, John. Congratulations on your book. Thanks, um, I, I'm not a football fan. I have to say, I'm a I'm a great disappointment to people in that way. But I'm for Scythe, are you? <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> not related to Tam for Scythe. He he gets a mention in the book. Does he? <laughs> All right. The famous, um, the famous toe end that won the Scottish Cup for Rangers. I see. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's not. I mentioned you. Well, to be fair, uh, just to be clear. It talks about football players, but it's not a football I know, game. I know, I know, I realise, I realise. Yeah. No, there's a lot of interest that way. Um, can I just ask, every family's got its own skeletons. You've mentioned some of the problems. Um, what was your most interesting skeleton that you came across, just, just as an aside? I, the legitimacy must have been, you know, a major difficulty, but... Uh, was there anything uh, else you came over? I would say that the, the, the John Gregg one, uh, where his great grandmother died in the poor house. Um, right. And she'd had another child to another unknown father. Mm -hmm. So um, the, 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 there'd be another Greg line uh, that, that John Greg doesn't even know about. But, um, the, I don't think it was well known that uh, Alec MacDonald had a Catholic, uh, uh, had a Catholic granny. Uh, but he, he did actually mention her in his, his autobiography. So, uh, but um, he, he, his McDonald's were Catholics uh, going back, but he, he didn't make a big play of it. Um, Derek, uh, was it Derek Parlane? Uh, there, was, there was something interesting in Derek, Derek Parlane's uh, family history. Well, well, the thing that was interesting about that is his family came from a place called Rue. You know Rue in Dumbartonshire? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's on the shores of the Gaelor. Uh, and actually, um, that is, that, that's where two of the founding fathers of Rangers uh, came from. Uh, so that, that, 
there's actually a great connection there. And they, you know, like Willie Waddle and Willie Thornton went out to do, uh, to see a player that had the father, uh, Jimmy Parlane, he had played with them in the, in the 50s. Uh, but it was to sign, it was to sign Derek Parlane. Um, I mean, I, I can't think of uh, any other. No. I mean, there's quite a few illegitimacies. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But actually, Can... well, funnily enough, um, Derek Johnson, if you go back far enough in Derek Johnson's, his Johnson, um, we are, I think it was Bamshire or something like that, but he, di he didn't actually take anything to do with uh, the, the family. Uh, he never ever married the woman, but she named the boy after uh, uh, James Johnson, I think this chap was. Mm -hmm. So she named him, and that, that was actually very common back then. If you were illegitimate, you would be named after the father of repute. It, it, was, it was basically to let the church know, this is the guy that did it. <laughs> so it was. Uh, and the uh, you know, like Claire will know that in Edinburgh they have all the Kirk session records. Yes. And if you go if you go through the Kirk session records for the, the Victorian era up to maybe about eighteen eighty, about seventy percent of the minutes are are basically fornications. You know, like, and, and that's what they call them. It's a fornic yeah, yeah, fornication yeah. case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, it's actually tragic reading it because usually it's just the women getting hauled into church to uh, to, to to name the the father, and and in most cases it's the woman that actually suffers. You know, like the three the three weeks on the the, the penance stool, yeah. uh, and and usually the father is some errant farmer who has his way with you know like, uh, all the various uh, dairy maids etc. Uh, and uh, you know he didn't. You know he'll come into church and just deny it, uh, black and white, that he had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so that's why they used to name uh, name name people after errant fathers. Uh, errant fathers. Thanks, Graham. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, just oh, sorry. Next point. You must have found, I assume you find it very rewarding being able to give the information to the families about what you'd actually find out. In terms of the genealogy, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm working on that. Like with the Celtic book, every yeah. player or a widow uh, got a free copy of the book. I see, I see. And you know, like he, Bobby Murdoch was one of the Celtic players, and his wife was so pleased with the, uh, you know, like with it that she wrote the foreword uh, to the Pride of the Jocks Good. because because of being in the footballing sphere. <laughs> she actually knew. Um, she actually knew all all the famous uh, footballers, and we, we've just lost Jack Charlton there. And uh, he, Bobby Murdoch went to coach at Middlesbrough, uh, and he arrived there just about the time that Jack Charlton arrived. And uh, she was able to tell me stories about Jack Charlton, you know, uh, and what a kind of genial man he was. Whereas mm -hmm. I, I believe that Bobby. Bobby Charlton is he's completely the opposite. But yeah, I the plan is to get a copy of the book to the families of the uh, all all the sixteen Rangers players. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, right, we had a question. I think had a think had a uh, oh, wait a minute. Just unmute. No. You unmute yourself, Teresa. Is a bit, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just wanted to say congratulations. That's a great to yeah, interview. Thank that's you. Yeah. you should be on the telly. I, I enjoy all your books as well. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Um, I just thought, you know, when you were talking about your pictures on the front, I always thought they were from we cigarette. You know, you used to get right. pictures in a cigarette pack. Yeah, yeah, I always yeah. thought they were from there. So well done in that. John Steele's got all the cigarette cards. <laughs> and with that, so well done with your book. That's yeah. Cool. Right, thanks very much. And good luck with your... Uh, Thank you. Uh, I hope to be there next week to... It was about crabs, wasn't it? Something, something to do with crabs. Knuckers, you're right. 
I got I got nipper. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, the the story behind our nipper. And that's next Tuesday. That's next. Yep, that's next week. We'll be here. Right? We'll be here with Teresa. Um, we've got probably got time for just one more question. If there was anybody else had something that they wanted to ask, Nathaniel. Okay, we'll come to you. No, you to unmute yourself. It's not available. Congratulations, John. Oh, Thank you. Derek, sorry. Thanks. Um, you were talking about your desire to um, look into Manchester United. I, I was thinking, I'm a Liverpool fan, um, but I was thinking about the, all the Scottish greats from the 70s in terms of how reliant the English teams were. They're, they're all in this book here. In the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but all, all the great... So all the great teams of the 70s, yeah. you know, from Leeds, Liverpool and Man Manchester United, they all relied on a core group of Scottish players, didn't Absolutely. they? So there, there's a great uh, mine to be, uh, to be dug out there, I feel. I, I don't know. It might have been John Steele that suggested it. Yeah, John Steele suggested doing a, a book on the 16 greatest uh, Liverpool players of the, of the modern era. Mm. I feel like, 16 greatest Scottish players of the modern era, you know, so I mean, I've got plenty to choose from there, certainly. Um, probably more books to write than, uh, than, than not. <laughs> Can I say, uh, Neil, congratulations to your team uh, and, and, and winning the league after 30 years. You, you must be quite chuffed about that. Yeah, so we, we've, we've knocked another team off their perch, I think, is the term, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yep, a celebration indeed. Thank you. So thank you, Nathaniel. Um, thank you, everybody, for um, if we come back. And um, yep. So what <laughs> is just you know, congratulations. I'm going to just unmute everybody just in a second because I'd like to sort of to kind of give you give you a bit of a cheer and a clap. If you would have done it anyway, if we'd been in, um, if we had been in a. a in Watersons, which we often wear. So if everybody, if, just in case I can't unmute you, sometimes if you've muted yourself, you want to unmute yourself. Um, yeah. Amalia, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing Amalia is related to Teresa Watson, is that right? No. No, 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 all right, right. I know you've got great connections, have yeah. you not? Yes, yeah, yeah. sure. On you, Amalia. So maybe you have to do it. So what I would, what I would say, I'm going to just um, put us all in a gallery. So we can see everybody. And I would like to say just so after three, we'll just give you a big cheer and some congratulations. So one, two, three. Can... Yeah. Well congratulations. Congratulations. Where can we find you then, John? And um, if people want to follow you on um, on social media, because I know that you're uh, you're on there quite a bit. So where can we find you? Well, you find find me on on Twitter at, at Derek Nevin seventy two. You find me on Facebook uh, under Faith McGee uh, or John McGee. Uh, but there's a Pride of the Bears page there. Um, it is on Amazon, but I'm I'm still. I think Neil. I think Neil got his problem sorted out, but I, I'm I'm still struggling uh, with Amazon to get it. Uh. Oops. Wait a minute. I happened to you see you there? Acted. <laughs> Whatever. Go. Right. I'm, I'm I'm still fighting with Amazon to get it um, to get the paperback uh, listed on there. It is actually, it sold a couple of copies in the United States, so I don't know what the problem with Amazon UK is. <coughs> yeah, just, as I say, um, I hope to get it into Watterson soon. Uh, and uh, what I found, uh, I, it might be because it's a non-factual book, but it's done very well on Facebook uh, Marketplace. Uh, it's something that uh, Neil and and Teresa might want to try uh, as a, you put a wee, um, it's a bit like eBay, um, and uh, you just put a wee offer on, uh, you know, and, and people will come back to say, is, is your book available? Uh, and I, I've sold a few that way over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And if anybody does want, I mean, we can put um, an order on our website, the Indie Authors World website. We've had, we've had some issues with our website recently as well with WooCommerce, but I think we've, thank, 
things and the things we've got them sorted. Um, so we can also just pass on to yourself if anybody's looking for some, you know, because I know that you've got some copies and we can definitely do that. Um, so well, well, what I would say there is if, if, if anybody orders direct from Indie Authors World, uh, two cow uh, from every book ordered uh, will go to Callum's Legacy. Thank you, Joanne. Okay. Very kind of you, very much appreciated. Um, so, can I say thank you to everybody for coming and joining us. Thank you, John, for being such a great, um, a great guest to, to chat to about your book. Um, congratulations once again on Pride of the Bear. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing it rump up the charts very soon. <laughs> How about the free competition? Oh, yes, you're sorry, your free competition. Yeah, on you go. Yeah, you've got quite a yeah. Okay, so. Um, if you use the chat button at the bottom, uh, I'm looking for a two-word answer, and I'm guessing that John Steele will win it anyway, but uh, I'm looking for a two-word answer. If you put it on chat at the bottom, the first person to come through will win a free signed copy of Pride of the Bears. So um, this might be a bit unfair in the likes of uh, Neil Nathaniel, <laughs> but which Rangers player scored in two rounds of the 1972 campaign but failed to win a medal because he was out of contract after a fallout with Willie Waddle. John Steele knows the answer. I can't type it. <laughs> hey, what is it? Willie Henderson. We have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> Who, who's it to be signed to? Is it to be signed to Craig, Kirsty? Well, well I, just to, just to, just to put it to one of the other uh, guests that you've got on there. All right, I will do. I, I'll get in touch with one of, one of the other guests. We'll do a random, very random show. The next one guests are going to get the copy of the book. That's <laughs> okay. So, so thanks, they, thanks very much for uh, coming and joining me today. It was very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being part of this. If hopefully you'll come and join us next week and we're going to have... Um, uh, I'll be there, Teresa. We'll have Teresa and we'll be talking to her. I'll be there, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, folks, and have a lovely rest of your day. So. Lovely to see and you, you too. Thank you. Bye. Go on, nice to see you. Uh, you too. How's the book been going up there? Is your... Son enjoyed it? Um, it's not actually my son that I'm giving it to. <laughs>